Hey guys, it's Monday night. We just had our worship on on the base. So over here, and uh, it was it was a good night of worship. Not a lot of people, but that isn't uh, the the amount of people that makes good worship, right? It's uh, people that are worshiping God with their hearts, with their minds, with their souls. There's uh, my Joy. That's actually her name, eh, Joyka? Hey, hey, you. She doesn't pay attention. But anyway, uh, today doing a lot of thinking, working on my, my book that I'm inspired to do and part of my work to get my doctorate anyway. Uh, doing a lot of thinking about what we've had to go through here. And all the emotions. Um, you know, it's kind of cool when this the whole thing started, how God put all this together so quickly, uh, the ministry and everything. We all had our ministries we're doing. Everybody was, you know, doing our regular ministry. Um, but if you think about it, not every day or often you're doing a lot of evangelistic type of things. Uh, not that uh, we're called every day to preach the gospel or try to dig up people to preach the gospel, but um, it should be a part of our lifestyle, right? The way we think, what talk, when we meet people, what we share with people, that we're interested in <clears throat> people coming to the kingdom of God, to know God. <clears throat> I uh, was working on my paper today and part of the topic, uh, one of the topics is humility. And humility is one of these things that's fleeting. It's one of these things that is so hard to come by. It's one of those things that uh, God loves. And uh, we, we all wanna be humble. We all wanna be humble, I believe. Uh, these Christians all wanna be humble because we understand the value of it. But to be humble, there's a lot of pitfalls in being humble. I can, I can wanna be humble to impress people, but that's not really humility, is it? Or I can be humble that, to try to be the most humble person in the room that people will respect me, but that's not humble either, actually. Um, hum humility, I think, comes out of, <clears throat> partially, at least for me, has come out of brokenness. Uh, when I first became a Christian, the, I say this all the time, the first time I was ever humble was when I knew I needed Jesus Christ. <laughs> when I called on Jesus Christ, that was the first time I was humble. And I can't say I'm humble. I'm, I'm, it's a process that I, I wanna learn. And the more I'm like Jesus, the more humble I am. The more I'm like James, the less humble I am. And there's a lot of James in me and a, not much Christ sometimes. And in the war, it's brought up emotions of anger, frustration, um, brokenness, brokenheartedness, um, tears, especially the first, first month of the war, tears every single day, uh, sometimes just fighting it off, not being able to speak a sentence without tears coming out. It's not just me. I'm talking about everybody who stayed here. When you talk about the war, you, you know, all the terrible things that went on, all the murders, um, in the in the tens of thousands and probably in reality in the hundreds of thousands, the rapes in the thousands. And uh, last night was just a, a terrible thing. Uh, we heard that the Russians took a mother and her small son and, and put them together with a mine in between them. So if they would separate, they would be blown up and they tried to separate them, but it wasn't successful. 
you hear stuff like this and you wonder what kind of human can do such a thing. Why would, why would the Russian army allow their people to do all these tortures of our soldiers? Uh, and I'm not going to say our soldiers now aren't doing some torture. They probably are because they're, they're seeing all this brokenness, all their, their people, their nation being destroyed. And it's so frustrating. And you know that in Russia, uh, Russia's really think they're doing Ukraine a big service. They're helping Ukraine liberate Ukraine from Nazis, terrorists, murderers like me, <laughs> right? Uh, when you hear this stuff and you know they believe it, and we have family members there that believe that sort of nonsense, and they don't believe us, they believe the Russian TV. So we, we tell them, guys, it's not like that here. And even people who have um, even spent time or years here and have spent years in Russia somehow have been bewitched by Russian TV and totally believe that Russia is saving the world by destroying Ukraine. The insanity and the evilness of that. And the Bible actually speaks quite a bit about this, this sort of thinking that people become deprived in their thinking because we're deprived is there's a reason for it. It's a lack of truth, a lack of knowing the word of God, the lack of reading God's word, the lack of understanding who God is, his character, and uh, recognizing truth when you hear it and recognizing lies when you hear it and knowing how to seek out the truth. Uh, these things are hidden from many people. And so a lot of people believe in lies. But I believe in a God of truth and a God of order, a God of love, a creative God who's a creative God, not a God of destruction. A God who loves, a God who gave up, gave up his own life for me and you and for the world. A God who is beautiful. In fact, he's more beautiful than all his creation. If you can imagine how beautiful God has to be. It's uh, amazing. I'm looking at a beautiful evening and we're sitting here in peace. But the peace is kind of a false peace. You kind of dream of having barbecue and you kind of dream of being able to just kick back and and laugh with your friends and we try to do some of that but there's this war hanging over your head all the time and it doesn't feel right to have fun when your brothers and sisters and other places are being killed or fighting for freedom for Ukraine God is doing a lot of work in my heart and humility is one of these things that I'll have to work on for the rest of my life. And I think we all do. In reality, I don't know anybody who is so humble. I can say it's truly a humble person, deeply humble person. I, there's a few people I met that are very humble. But again, the question is, what is humility? And uh, humility is not fighting for your voice to be heard and not um, trying to be right or trying to show anybody how wise you are or how wonderful you are but being the voice of logic and the voice the voice of truth instead of being pacifist uh, as many people around the world are pacifists a lot of Christians are pacifists it means for instance, there's a lot of Christians who maybe are Ukrainian or Russians who know the truth in the churches, but they don't want to say anything about the war because it could cause problems. Um, and if you don't say anything when someone is doing evil, uh, you actually are sinning because the word of God says, if you know somebody is sinning, go and tell them, go and deal with it. Uh, you know, if they don't change, then you go talk to somebody else and the two of you go and they don't change, then you talk to the pastor. Uh, what we tend to do now 
is say that we don't want to hurt anybody or we don't want to get involved in something that's not ours. Uh, it's not our problem. We're not part of it. So we're quiet. We sit back and we watch the evil go on and on and on. I believe that the churches should be shouting aloud that what Russia is doing is wrong, is evil. I don't think there should be a church on earth that would stand with Russia. I don't think any Russian church should stand with Russia. If they know the word of God and they understand. You know, that the thing that it drives me nuts is they will say this. James, Ukraine hasn't honored its leadership in the past. Uh, we honor our leadership. And I'm like, okay, guys, if your leaders are stealing, raping, and killing, you're going to honor your, your leadership? So we'll honor our leadership, but if they're going to steal Rob, they're going to, if they're going to sin, then I'll say something. I won't stand for it because it's wrong. It's evil. If our president is doing something I disagree with, that's different. He can, he can change the law. He can, he can uh, make decisions that I disagree with. But if he's going to do something I believe is biblically sinful, then I need to stand up for that and I need to speak against it. If I don't, I'm a pacifist and I don't represent God. I don't represent Jesus Christ. I'm not a defender of the weak or the widow or the orphan. I'm just standing there trying to be safe and not cause any problems. That's not a Christian. And I'm tired of Christians being quiet and, and uh, trying to be pacifists. To please other people we need to please god um just probably been covering up my mic but we need to please god and when somebody is sinning we need to talk to them if they have a character fault i don't like something about them they talk too much they're too loud uh whatever things like that then no i'm not going to say anything because that's the problem i have with that person that's not a sin that they're maybe talking too much or they're saying things I disagree with. That's, that's their character. I need to learn to accept people who have a different character than me. And it's not sin just because somebody speaks too much or prays too much or um, is too aggressive or, or even not aggressive. That's, that's their character. But again, guys, uh, there's a difference in character and being biblical, okay? If our character is not biblical, then it's something we need to work on. Like humility, I want to be humble, but humility is far from me. God says he hates the prideful, but he loves hum humility. And Jesus was very humble. He was the most humble. And he, uh, he taught us to love our enemies, to pray for them, that's one of the hardest things in Ukraine right now for every Ukrainian is to pray for Putin and Russians. And we're doing that even though we hate, believe me, we hate what they're doing. We hate everything that they're doing. Uh, we are frustrated with Russia. Um, but we're praying for them. We're praying that we'll get revelation of God, revelation of his love, revelation of truth. We, we just finished praying that Putin would have a dream of just a dream that he, God would take him to hell and show him what hell looks like. So Putin would get a revelation of where he's going to go if he doesn't change his, his, his heart. And uh, Putin's going in for an operation today. So if he isn't in right now. So we're praying that he will get revelation in a dream or a vision or something that will change his heart and his mind and for all the government of Russia because they're all in the same boat the way they think. <sighs> anyway, keep praying for Ukraine, pray for us. Uh, the battle of the mind is on and uh, us Christians, right? We, we keep our mind sharp with the word of God. It's the sword that cuts through the lies and we need that truth of the word of God to be dwelling in us day and night. So God bless you all. I'm going to say a quick prayer for Ukraine, if you can agree with me. Father God, I just thank you 
that you are the king of the earth. You're the creator of all things. You are my creator. You are my God. And we choose to follow you, me and my house to the end, Father. We love you. We need you. You are so good all the time. Lord, forgive us for our immaturities. Forgive us for our angers. For you, forgive Ukraine for the corruption it has in the past. And I don't say Ukraine is worse than Russia or anything like that. I'm just talking right now because I live here. Father, forgive Ukraine. And I know, Lord, um, a lot of things will change because of this war and many things for good. Um, but Lord, there's so many broken hearts and broken families right now in the, in the hundreds of thousands, um, 10 million displaced people, Father. Uh, this country needs your help. We need your protection from the enemy. We need your strength, Father, to go on. Pray, God, I pray for our soldiers, for the families of the soldiers. Encourage and strengthen them today, God. They need you. We need you. They need encouragement, Father. There's no rest for them. They have no rest for two months. They're going in and out every day, Father. Encourage them, bless them. Thank you for all the people making meals for them, all the people providing equipment for them, that every Ukrainian is fighting in the way they can fight, Father. Thank you. But help this nation to become a humble nation, Lord, to seek you and to make you the, their Lord. Make Ukraine... Um, a country that you would be proud of, Father. We're praying, Father, millions of people, hundreds of millions of people, God, I believe, are praying to you right now, Father, around the world. Father, for you to help Zelensky and the leadership of Ukraine to be men of honor, men who will seek your face, men who will pray and not afraid to speak about you or to pray in front of the nation. Thank you for everything you're doing, God, for Ukraine. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you that we still are here, Father. Thank you for the churches that you've planted all over Ukraine. God, you are good God, and we love you, and we praise you, and thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Have a good morning for some of you and a good evening. It's uh, 9.08 here at night. So thank you, guys. Love you all.